Hey there traders, welcome back to another daily recap on the Ticks and Trades channel. My name is Sam Morton and what we do here each day is start out the morning by identifying levels of support and resistance in the SPY that we use for entering trades in the S&P 500 e-mini futures throughout the day. There is a process we use that has a high probability of grabbing successful trades at these levels. Right now it's before 7 a.m. Eastern, starting out a little earlier than usual today. But that's okay, the market has provided sufficient data to where we're able to identify several levels of probable support and resistance. Remember, this is the day before the FOMC decision, and usually the market kind of waits around for these big announcements and doesn't do a whole lot. The fireworks usually start around 2 p.m. on Wednesday on these FOMC days. But we're in unusual times. They might not go to sleep today like you'd typically expect. The SPY has gotten itself back to the threshold of the former highs from back in July, just in time for this Fed announcement. But they've managed to do it while kind of exuding like a general bearish sentiment at the same time. I'm not sure how to explain that other than they seem to be acting bullish and bearish at the same time. Just my opinion. You can take that however you'd like. It's barely 7 a.m. and they've already tested 565 in the pre-market, hit it to the penny. The bulls do want to make new highs. They probably will. But I'll tell you what this means for me today. If price gets up to the former highs, which is a handful of points above 565, I just don't see the bulls running away with it and driving price a whole lot higher than that. Maybe they can get price up to 566, slightly above. Those are the top two levels that I have on the board today. I trust them. If price gets up there, I don't have a problem shorting up there. So we'll see. I may eat my words, but if I get a chance to go short near the top today, I probably will. After the closing bell, we'll come back to the same chart to discuss any trades that may have resulted from today's levels. And any profit gained or loss incurred for the day is logged in a tracking system that we'll go over at the end of the video. This way you can see the long-term effectiveness of this approach. So I'll catch you on the other side after the market closes. Would it be fair to say that what they did today is almost exactly what I thought they might do? I wish I could have ridden this thing down farther. I did get stopped out. But let's just talk about if you're playing by the rules, what would you have done at these levels? So it's clear to see that three levels were expected. They didn't get down to here, but it was this area was good support but anyway that's a non-factor so i like to give the market about 15 minutes to settle in so here that's 9 45 in the eastern time zone so after 9 45 they were above this level at 565 now you can adjust it with five cents we're going to go ahead and say you did so 565.05 and you're going to go on a long position here now i really kind of wanted to be on the short side i took one contract here but let's just let's just keep talking about playing by the rules so if you got if you went long here they came up within a few pennies of giving you a base hit before coming back down so just to be fair, let's say that's a near miss. Um, I end up managed to squeeze it out. You'll see, you'll see that happening. But you know, if you were to strictly look at the rule, play in by the rules, which says that if you get like within ten cents or you know within say five to ten cents of the profit objective, and a few minutes later you're back down at your entry level and falling, you probably miss the trade. You know, it doesn't always work out that way. But you know, I'd feel kind of bad if I were out out of the money here. If I went short here, sorry, if I went long. They're down here and I didn't take a profit when they were just pennies away from my profit objective. I'd, I'd want to jump out. Basically, this is a wash. Jump out at the entry level. So no trade, playing by the rules. That's a little unfortunate because they did they did come up, but that really was the trade there. Anyway, the next level, five five sixty six oh six, kind of the same thing. But like I said before, you know, being short, maybe somewhat of a gamble. I don't know. It just felt like it was a good place to be short. I uh, had a few other reasons for it. And, um, you know, that's a base hit there. So that's one base hit. And then down here, they came up really close. Let's see, 562.84. So 562.89, that's five cents added to it. And it was just, just barely there. They got down to 90 both times, pulled away. So that's a near miss. Don't take it. And here's a pre perfect example of why you don't want to take this for another bounce that if they come back soon. And here we go. They fell through it. So would you want to be in a short trade? Sorry, a long trade here. Man, I'm tired. It's been a long day. No, you wouldn't. That's your near miss. Didn't take the trade. But if they come back up into it under, from the underside, you can take it for a short trade. There's your recycle. So really just uh, two trades. The short trade here and the short trade here. Now, there's a lot going on here. But if you're strictly playing by the rules, sticking to a process, and paying attention to every little detail, and not taking any creative liberties, that's what you probably would have ended up with. Here's my trades. First one goes by a little fast, so I'll just explain to you what's going on here. So I told you that I bought when they came down right after 945, and you'll see the limit order. In fact, I'll just pause it when you see the limit order on the screen right, right after 945 a.m. They're above the level. I just bought one contract because I really wanted to be on the short side today, not the long side. There we go. 
All right, well, here we go. So um, what's happening is I'm filled, and they're on the way back up for to get four points, and it just happened to work out. Boom, they hit four points there. So I got just you know two hundred dollars with one contract. Pretty happen or pretty fast. And they fell down. You, you know what happened there? And then so they, they're coming back up here now. At this point, I'm thinking, well, did I miss my chance to go short here? And you know, oftentimes they'll come back up, and I'm willing to take this for a short trade if they bounce on the underside of this level. I would just sell at the market somewhere in this neighborhood. And I kind of jumped the gun a little bit, and you'll see me go short with two contracts when they're coming back up. And it wasn't enough time. I want to see at least 20 minutes. Actually, I'm just telling you right now, 20 minutes or more, I'll take it for a short trade on the other side. I call those recycle trades. And I see them coming up, and I went short with two contracts and kind of immediately regretted my decision. But, you know, well, not, I shouldn't say I regretted it. Just I realized, why did I do that? It had only been, it wasn't 20 minutes here. And so this... It's kind of a sign that, all right, they're going to go higher. But then I told you I was willing to be short. So I just went ahead and uh, went short here. And I did not intend to sell four here. I intended, to sell, attended, I intended to sell two. I had the order in wrong. And I realized, well, I just sold four. So now I'm short six. So I just thought, well, I'll take four off and trail the other two if I can. They came up. This was a good sign here to me that, all right, they're going to get some some uh, pressure up here from the bears. The bears want to push this thing down. It happened a few times. and. I'll just let it go and see if I can get them to come down farther because I thought if they could come down here, they would fall lower. They did, but as you know already because you saw the entire day in that one-minute chart, they were kind of you know, whipping around a little bit here. So I got my four trades off or four contracts off here at some point coming up, and I put the trailer, not a big enough trailer. I'm going to pause this to tell you. So I, put, I think it was five points or so uh, between – um, where price was in my trailer, and it really wasn't long enough. I should have made it bigger, and they quickly sought me out, thinking, "Well, if they come down here, I'll take one off." I'm here. I'm all kind of, kind of salivating a, a little bit, thinking I could take one off, trail the other one down, you know, because I had kind of expected them to come down farther, which they did. I just unfortunately got stopped out there and wasn't willing to take any more trades. Now they bounced off these levels, as you've already seen, for quite a while, and right before noon or so, I, um, I had to close up shop. So I recorded this up till that point and stopped. So I didn't take any of the other trades that we like down here. There was uh, you know, the near miss, and then we talked about that. If you're playing by the rules, you could at least have to recycle in that trade and got an extra trade or so. But what you just saw there ended up being around fifteen hundred dollars because because I was short six and that was a lot more than I expected. So anyway, I kind of uh, mumbled my way through that, but hopefully you get the idea of what just happened on my trades. On the tracking log, the first one is the playing by the rules log. Here are your two base hits. They messed around with this level quite a bit, but if you're strictly adhering to this process and not inventing anything, you wouldn't have traded it because of the near-miss situation, which is explained here in the notes. But two points, or sorry, two base hits is eight points because we're always going for four points for a base hit without really any anything imaginative. My trades ended up being $1,500 and some change uh, with the net points that I got. So there you go. Played by the rules, my trades for the day. And that's all I've got today. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Back in the morning with new levels. Probably going to be interesting tomorrow afternoon. No surprise there. Thanks again for watching. Catch you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.